to be in the service of the Lord, even this one more time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among all the people. I want to read from the 24th number of Psalm as we begin our worship service this morning. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Father, we thank you again for blessing us to see another day, to see another Lord's day, to wake up and to be in our right minds, clothed with your spirit, O Lord. And Father, we invite your spirit into our respective worship spaces today. Lord, we thank you for being who you are. We thank you for what you've done, and we want to praise your holy and righteous name even again today. Father, when we cried out, you had mercy on us, and we just want to give thanks for your grace and your mercy today. And so we enter into this worship humbly and submissive to your will and to your way. Bless us now as we do our best while we're here on this side of heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name today. Amen.
families, but remember Deacon Hayward who is suffering in bereavement as well. Deacon Samuels. Be in prayer for those who have been in the hospital or currently in the hospital. Sister Rocket was in for surgery on Friday in his home recuperating. Mm -hmm. Sister Teresa Campbell Thomas is in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Sister Maddie Johnson hospitalized. Sister Strickland was in for a couple of days, but she's back home doing well Amen. as well. Amen. Be in prayer for Sister Nathan Lane Washington and Sister Barbara Roth, mm -hmm. Sister Anita Pearson and Sister Bobby Johnson. Mm -hmm. I want us to be in prayer for those who I know that are suffering from the virus. That would be Reverend Richard C. Lee. Mm -hmm and be in prayer for his wife as well, who just recently had knee surgery. Sister Lois Bowman and her sister James Etta, brother Freddie Hammonds, and just some others that I know of that I want us to add to our prayer list because prayer is powerful and prayer yes, changes yes, things. Yes. Amen. Sister Christy Lewis's son, mm -hmm. be in prayer for him. Mm -hmm. Be in prayer for Pastor B.G. Roberson of the Corinthian Baptist Church who is at home but suffering from the virus. Mm -hmm. Pastor Lewis Mendoza as well. Continue prayer for Brother A.J. Ford, Brother Y. Shane Murphy, Brother Anthony Ford as well. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, be in prayer for my partner, First Lady. She's a little under the weather and at mm -hmm. home this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And as we go in prayer, Matthew 11, 28 comes to mind. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Father, we thank you again for another opportunity 
to bring our cares and our petitions to your throne of grace. We bow humbly. We bow reverently. Recognizing who you are and all of the great things that you've already done. Lord, we recognize it's no goodness of our own that has afforded us this opportunity. But your infinite grace, your mercy, your everlasting mercy has given us another chance. Lord, we don't come because We've been so good, so gracious, or so kind. But become because you first loved us, gave your life as a substitutionary sacrifice that we might be in relationship. Lord, we come this morning thanking you for our salvation. Thanking you for picking us up when we could not carry ourselves. Father, you're a magnificent, a marvelous, a majestic God. One who sits high and looks low. But even in all of your majesty, you still care about us individually. And Lord, you care about what's going on in our individual lives. You care about my hurts and my pains, my afflictions. And Lord, today we come asking that you would see about us. Heal our broken hearts. Mend our broken bodies. And even more than that, Lord, bind up our fractured relationships. Lord, we come today because there's no other help we know. When we look, we look to the hills from which cometh our help. It comes from thee and thee alone. Lord, when I cried, you heard me. Thank you for hearing us, O oh Lord, even again this day. And Father, for those who are suffering bereavement, we pray your blessings that you would fill that empty void that you would touch hearts, minds, souls. Let them know that you've never left them nor forsaken them. For those who are in the hospital, Lord, we pray your ever blessings on them. These are strange and curious days. Somehow we cannot see our loved ones when they're infirm. And so, Lord, we're asking that you would touch them. I, I love a Zoom call, Lord, but I love it more when you're in their presence. Touch them, Lord, and help make sure that they are doing well. And Lord, for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, touch minds, reinvigorate hearts, give them to know that you are a true and a living Savior. There's no other way but through thy Son. And Father, for those who are just not feeling 100%, aches and pains, touch, Lord, today. Touch with a finger of your healing mercy. Touch, Lord. Lift them up. Bring them back to full health and strength. That they might be a greater witness to you while we're here on this side of heaven. Lord, we always come praying, knowing that you hear our prayers, but we're even more excited about the fact that you answer our yeah, prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Hear us today, O oh Lord. You. Incline your ear towards us one more time and answer as only you can, as only you will. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' 
mighty name, we do pray today. And everyone under the sound of my voice said, Amen and Amen. Break every 
Testament book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 9, and I would that you would hear these words from verses 14 through 17, Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 17, coming from the King James Version. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth into an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved interesting text this morning if i could i'd like to talk to us from the subject old clothes and new skins old clothes and new skins. We find ourselves here at the start of a new calendar year. And as with so many other years, so many of us have made promises to ourselves. Yes. Let me start with the easy ones. <laughs> I'm going to eat better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to exercise more often. Let me move to something a little more difficult. I'm going to save money. Yes, Jesus. I'm going to tithe and give God what he is due. So many promises with good intentions. New Year brings great opportunities and great plans. But yet we struggle again this year as we have in years past. The question becomes, how can I make it past January 17th with all my new goals? How can I make a fresh start this year when I've been unsuccessful in years past. What's hindering me? The problem for so many of us is we're working within our own strength. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The problem is we're working in our own strength. We have been into the bookstore and into the library. We've seen the shelves of the self-help books and we think if we just help ourselves that much more, we can get to where we want to be. We are working in our own strength. And when we work in our own strength, we're working with a flawed plan. Yes. In this particular text, in this Matthew text, Jesus is in his early ministry. In fact, he's just called Matthew, Levi, to be one of his disciples. This man is a hated tax collector. And the reason he was hated so much is because not only did he collect taxes for the Romans, but the tax collectors indulged themselves and collected some additional funds for their own pockets. Yeah. And so they were not only considered thieves, they were considered traitors as well. They were Israelites working for the man. And so they were hated. And so Jesus calls Matthew. And soon after he calls him, he goes to dinner at Matthew's house. You can only imagine the religious folk of the day talking about Jesus because he's gone to the house of a traitor, a thief, and a sinner. And so the disciples of John approach him because they've been watching Jesus. And they ask a question Why do you, I'm sorry, do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples never fast? Mm -hmm. A couple of things I need for you to watch out here. First thing is, somebody's always watching you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whatever you're doing, whatever you profess to be, somebody's watching to see if you're really that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they're watching Jesus. Yeah. And so Jesus called Matthew not based on his current occupation, but what he saw he could be. Yeah. Called him based on the potential, what he knew he could be. So when Jesus calls us from whatever we're in, from whatever we're doing, he does it because we can be successful. All right. And he knows we can be successful. Thank you. Yeah. In this new year, I'm praying that each one of us can be successful. Amen. There's so many of us who are excited about trying to see 2020 put behind us. We're rushing to get there, rushing to get into 2021. <laughs> Not merely because of the events that are taking place in our country, but because of some struggles and some strains that we had in our own personal lives. Right. Yes. It's just some stuff I needed to get past. Yes. And I wish the change of the calendar would make it better. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2020 is gone. Mm. But the first seven days of 2021 have Amen. shown us mm -hmm. Just because it's a brand new year doesn't mean that we don't have some old problems. Yes, All right. Amen. And so there's several things in this text I need for you to, 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 to grasp, to hold on to, that are going to assist us, that are going to be invaluable for us making it in this new year. All right. First thing I want you to look at in this text is the traditions. Mm -hmm. John had been taken away and was probably in prison. His disciples continued as a distinct entity. Look at that text. The disciples of John came to Jesus. 
They, they hung together even though their leader had been in prison. And so this group of believers comes to Jesus with that question I just raised. How is it that we, John's disciples, and the Pharisees and their disciples, we're doing all of this fasting, and those who are following you ain't fasting. So, before I go any further, let's talk fasting for just a minute. Amen. Fasting is a practice of self-denial, of abstinence, mostly from foods. And with the loss of our appetite, fasting is usually accompanied or associated with grief. It's natural to associate fasting with grief and sorrow because of the hunger that we feel. Mm -hmm. So fasting is associated with mourning. I know some of y'all are going to try to check me on this. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 31. Start with verse 13 and go on to chapter uh, 23 as well. Verse 23. So fasting is also associated with trying to gain favor from God. See, we fast and we pray to get closer to the Almighty God. In the Mosaic Law, in Leviticus 16, there was one time that we were appointed to fast. It was on the Day of Atonement, Leviticus 16, 29. Jump on over to verse 31 as well. And so we know that we are only supposed to fast once a year by the law. By the time we get to this text in Matthew in the New Testament, we can see that the Pharisees are fasting twice a week. And here, watch this. The tradition was that men would put on sackcloth and put ashes on their head and walk barefoot when they were fasting. To, to, to associate being in mourning, yeah, yeah. to draw themselves closer to God. And the struggles for John's disciple is this. How is it that the Pharisees, who Jesus talked about, are fasting? And we're fasting, John's disciples, we're fasting, and we think we're getting it right. But yet, y'all, Ain't fasting. Go to Matthew chapter 6, if you will. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, denounced the practice of the Pharisees because they were fasting for show. As an external show and outward display and never changing or disciplining their hearts and soul. So when they came to ask Jesus about fasting, the question never really was about fasting. The question is, how come you're not doing what the rest of us is doing? How come you're not following the customs of the day? Why are you not walking in our traditions? And people will denigrate you based on traditions. You know you're supposed to. We've always done it that way. And so here is Jesus in a situation understanding that it's not about fasting. And so he says, he actually gives two examples of why you can't stay with the old traditions, the old habits the old attitudes, the old way of addressing stuff. I need for you to know you can't carry all that old stuff mm -hmm. into your new year. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing the old stuff by tradition mm -hmm. and not by statute, because mm -hmm. God only said to fast one time a year, mm -hmm. and we fast in twice a week. 
You need to check your actions. Make sure they're not motivated by tradition, but motivated by scripture. All right. And so when Jesus went to answer this question, he gave two illustrations as an explanation. Second thing I want you to notice out of this text, not only are the traditions holding us, and you need to check your actions against traditions, but the second thing I need you to notice in this text is the transition. Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this. Text says, can the children of the bridegroom be sad as long as the bridegroom is with them? Mm -hmm. Interesting illustration. Mm -hmm. Stay with me for a second, watch this. Jesus uses the illustration of a wedding. Yeah. Well, in the near Middle Eastern culture, the wedding wasn't an hour long ceremony. It lasted all week long. Look at the wedding of Cana back in John chapter two. Jesus went to the wedding and his first miracle was done because they ran out of wine. They didn't run out of wine in one hour. They had been celebrating all week. And they ran out of wine. And so nobody expected the wedding guests to fast while they were at the wedding. Hear him now. And so he uses this illustration to say, I have come. And while I'm here, the children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are at the wedding yeah. cannot be expected to fast yeah. while I'm here. All right. A time is coming when I'll be gone. Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm gone, there'll be plenty of time for fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this transition now. Oh, there's a time for mourning, but there's also a time for feasting. Mm -hmm. He says, you ought to be mourning because John's in prison. Yeah. They ought to be mourning because they're lost. But these is with me. Yeah. They're seeing miracles done. They're seeing people healed. They're seeing bodies raised. Yeah. It's not time to fast. It's time to feast. Yeah. Remember, John said it when he went out, when he went out into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a transition that's coming. There's a new day coming. Watch this. John and Jesus introduced the age of grace. The Mosaic law is no longer enforced. We now have Jesus. We have the age of grace being transitioned in. It's a new dispensation. Transitioning out of the old into the new. Let me see if I can't help you apply this to your life. So many of us want to be rigid about the Mosaic law. Here's what I want you to know. There's not enough works that you can do to get yourself into heaven. Yes. Yeah. There's not enough things that you can do. There's not enough chores that you can do to have satisfaction for salvation. Only by the grace of of our Lord and our Savior Jesus can you get into heaven. The old traditions won't get you into heaven. And so you need to pay attention to what the traditions were, but you need to understand that there has been a transition that's taken place. Works won't do it. We cannot have a works-based salvation. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Him and Him only. John 14 tells us Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. I don't care how many self-help books you buy, whether you get them out of the library and take them back or whether you spend some money and get them. There's not enough of them. You cannot get to heaven in your own strength until you have an encounter with Jesus. You're fighting a losing battle. Yeah. We must make the change. You've got to make that transition, not by works, mm -hmm. but by grace. Yeah. But by grace, but by the grace of God. He calls us. 
Watch this. He called Matthew, even though he was a hated traitor and thief. And he'll call you. But you've got to make the transition. Yeah. Matthew made the transition. Matthew said, here, Jesus, I want you to talk to all the fellows I know. Change them like you changed me. Because it was by his grace. Third thing I want you to notice in this text is the transformation. All right. Look right here in the text in verse 16 and 17. It says, nobody puts a patch on clothes with an unshrunk cloth for the patch will pull away and make the tear all the worse see the original question they asked was why don't your disciples fast and Jesus said you cannot fix the old system by simply inserting a single new piece all right yes Hear me now. You cannot fix the old mm. by just adding something new to it. All right. Amen. See, you can get a new piece of cloth mm -hmm. that's never been worn, that's never been washed, and you can sew it into your old clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you wash your old clothes, mm -hmm. the new cloth is going to change. Yeah. And it's not going to work with the old. Mm -hmm. And the tear that was in the old is just get worse yeah. based on trying to put some new into the old. Right, right. Oh, hear me now. Yeah, see, see, yeah. you can't take your old system that you used to have when you were still a sinner. That's right. You know you where you were on Friday and Saturday and, and the way you interacted with other people. Mm -hmm. And your system and your values and then just sprinkle a little Jesus on it and think that because you got up on Sunday morning, somehow you fixed it. You've only made the tear worse. Jesus understood it never was about fasting. How come you're not doing like we do? And sometimes some of us need to move from where we used to be, our old traditional playgrounds. You know the places you used to hang out and the stuff you used to do. When you was hooking and crooking. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to hook and crook all during the week and then you want to take a shower and come to church on Sunday and think God's going to be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Not by works, but by his grace. You've got to have the transformation. And similarly, he said, you can't put new wine in the old wine skins. The old wine skins will burst. They can't handle the new wine. See, the grace that God gives, that new grace that God gives, it can't go in a whole body. In fact, let me put it this way. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says it this way. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And all things are new. See, you can't just fix it. You got to transform it. Mm, watch this. You can't just fix yourself. You've got to be transformed. You've got to be a new individual if we're going to succeed in this new year. Can't take the old self. Try to put it in a new system. You need to change the old system. The old traditions. The new relationship will not fit into the old garment. You need new skins. You need a new way of thinking. Yes. Romans 12, 2 puts it this way. Be not conformed mm -hmm. to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. See, no more trying to fix the old system. No more trying to patch it up. No more putting a screw in it to make it whole for just a little while longer. No more attempting to repair what used to be. We need new. Yes. You need new. And you need to be made new right. in this new year. Right. If you're going to make it with your plan, then you've got to have Jesus in your plan. Yeah. I said earlier, I said this, when Jesus calls you, mm -hmm. he calls you from whatever you're doing because he knows yeah. you can be successful. Yes, 
And the interesting thing is, he's calling you right now. He's calling you out of that old system. Calling you out of those old traditions. He wants you to know that there's a transition that has happened. He came, he fled, he died, and he got up on that third day. But he did it so that you could transition from sinner to saint. Yeah. You can be all that he wants you to be. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay in that muck and mire, but he'll set you up on a rock to stay. All right. yeah. Be transitioned, and then watch this, and once you transition, your mind will be transformed. Yeah. 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 A true transformation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need some new clothes yeah. for your new wine. Because, see, that new wine is really the revelation of God's grace. Mm -hmm. That's all new. Mm -hmm. It ain't like that old stuff. It's new. And once you get it, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Folks will say, I don't know who you are now, but I want the old one. No, I don't want to be the old one no more. I want to be with Jesus. That's where I'm going to stand. And he's calling you calling you today, this year, 20 and 21. He's calling you. Will you answer? Will you answer the call? Will you be transformed by his grace? Stop trying to patch up that old thing. God's got something new for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen.
need you to give your life to Christ, please contact us by phone, by email, on the internet, however you need to get in touch with us. Because we're here to help you, to make it easier for you to have a relationship with our Lord and our Savior. And we love you just like he loves you. And we want you to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit. In Jesus' name. That's why we sing. That's why we pray. That's why we preach.